Today on Let's Fish TV, we're at Brandy Branch Reservoir. We're targeting largemouth bass. Let me tell you guys, it's the dog days of summer. I've never been here in the summertime, but the fish are biting. And let me tell you, the fishing is getting good. Today's episode is gonna be one you don't wanna miss. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That's a big one right there. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. You ever caught a fish that big? No! <laughs> Got him. Now the day. Ooh. There you go. Another redfish. Got, Got him. It. Now, that's what Let's Fish TV is all about right there, guys. Welcome to Let's Fish TV. I'm your host, Andrew Upshaw, and today we're at Brandy Branch Reservoir. Brandy Branch Reservoir is located just outside of Marshall, Texas, in Northeast Texas, and let me tell you guys, this place is loaded with big bass. We've been here a couple times before, but always in the spring, and I always said that if I ever got the chance, I'd wanna come back here during the summer and showcase just how good this body of water is, and today, I have a feeling it's gonna be one of those days. We'll also have this week's fishing report from your local region from our insider reporters. In the meantime, we'll get the boat launched, get everything set up, and we'll toss it back to the studio for your weekend planner. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. The Salooner Tables are predicting good game fish activity all three days of this holiday weekend. Peak game fish activity begins mid-morning around 9.51 Saturday and 10.44 Sunday and 11.36 Monday. Prime evening activity will begin around 10.16 on Saturday and 11.09 on Sunday and midnight on Monday. Depending on your location, expect the sun to rise around 7.03 and set around 7.54. Evenings will be pretty dark with the new moon. Keep up with our latest fishing adventures, tips, and tricks from Let's Fish TV by joining us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. All right guys, today we're out here on Brandy Branch, also known as Rogers Lake, early in the morning. And this is key this time of year. It's supposed to hit 105, 106 degrees today. Heat index around 115. So anytime you get this time of year, you wanna get out there early, get out there late. That's when the bite window is happening. You know, I wanted to come here this time of year. I've come here before in the early spring, sight fishing, that kind of stuff. But it's super hot. You got a lot of deep hydrilla. We're gonna be kind of dabbing around, doing a bunch of different things today, trying to figure out this elusive bite on Brandy Branch. Sun's coming up, it's time to get after it and go catch some bass. Seriously? Here we go. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, man. Guys, today we're out here on Brandy Branch. We're in the dog days of summer, and I was seeing some schooling fish kind of acting up around here by this dam, and I just happened to look down at my active target too and saw a really big mark, and the very first cast I made on him, I missed him. But then I threw back in there and he decided he was gonna eat it. It's a really good one there. Oh yeah. There we go, come here. Oh, look how dark that fish is. Oh, there we go. That's a way to start the day right there. Man, oh man, nice fish. Let's get this fish back. We're gonna talk a bit about Brandy Branch. What makes this fish so, so dark and what makes this fish so special? Yeah, this is just a really cool place. You know, that fish was super dark, and that's one thing that I love about this particular body of water. It has some super deep hydrilla. I'm talking 25 foot deep hydrilla. And today we're gonna dabble around it. We're gonna fish a little bit in around it, throwing a big jig, I'm gonna throw a minnow around, I'm gonna throw a top water around. We're gonna kind of explore the lake. You know, I've been here a bunch of times in the spring, especially during the spawn, and it is obviously one of the best spawning lakes in East Texas, as far as I'm concerned. Just has a really good population of that size fish and bigger. But you know, today we're early in the morning, the fishing is getting hot. It's starting to get hot out here as well. So let's get back to it. Let's see if we can catch a few more before it gets so hot that we can't stand to be out here. 
Hey folks, Captain E here with your Carolinas report this week brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. My good friends at Crazy Sister are excited about the fall. We got a lot of new things going on. We got tour boats. We've got a haunted tour. We got everything you want to do. We're going to have some cool nights coming up over the next couple months and we can get you out and help you enjoy. Visit CrazySisterMarina.com. Book your trip now. And I'll tell you what, we've talked about Red Snapper. We continue to talk about it. I think, um, you know, we're pretty much beating a dead horse at this point. But right now, if you get out there to 80 to 110 foot of water, you put down a live pinfish, anything big, frozen baits, a Spanish sardine, cigar minnows, you're going to probably end up running into a Red Snapper. Remember, right now, no Red Snapper possession, no gag grouper possession. But the scamps, which are an incredible, incredible tasting fish are still on the table and you can get out there and find them as well again i like right now this time of the year 80 to 110 foot of water get on those live bottoms go ahead and get you some trigger fish get you some vermilion snapper hopefully you can find some black sea bass but if you drop down big live bait or some big frozen baits like again spanish sardines cigar meadows you're gonna have a lot of success on those live bottoms and put a drip line out. There's still some big king mackerel around and some cobia. This has been your Carolinas Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. That one didn't. God, I wish I had another bait to drop in the water because that other one is now wants a piece of it. That's another good one there. Golly. Man, oh man, this is fun here. God, there's like five or six of them with him now. How big is this fish? I didn't hardly move him whenever I hooked him. I gotta make sure he stays out of this hydrilla. Cause I've only got like eight pound Strike King Tour grade fluorocarbon on. I don't wanna take a chance on breaking him off. Oh, there he is. Another good one. Oh yeah. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Oh, I wish they'd all act like that in a tournament. You know what I'm saying? He didn't jump or nothing. He just slid over there and got in the boat. God, another nice, beautiful fish. You know, sometimes you got to adapt, and that is the key to today so far, is I had these big expectations on exactly what I was gonna do when I came out here, but sometimes you just gotta make adjustments to what the fish are wanting to do and not necessarily what you wanna do. But another beautiful bass, golly, probably four pounds or so, three and three quarter, four pounds. Let's get this fish back. This lake is loaded with that size fish and a little bit bigger. You know, I've, I've caught them up to about six or seven pounds here, but a bunch of those fish in that three to four or five pound range. But you know, when it comes to chasing these open water fish or more that are off on the outside edge of the hydrilla, you gotta have the right equipment. And today we're using the Hyper Mag Speed Spin by Luz and a seven foot medium action Mark Rose Team Luz Signature Series rod. This is a really critical part, especially with throwing that small style minnow, you know, real small jig head, real small minnow, because it's all about matching the hatch this time of year. You know, the bait fish this time of year are about this big and finding that really small minnow is really key. But having the right line, having the right rod and reel are really, really key. 10 pound Strike King tour grade braid to an eight pound uh, tour grade fluorocarbon leader kind of completes that setup. But finding these fish, you know, using that active target too, scanning around is really vitally important. You can actually see these fish hit. But the one big key, probably more so than anything, is turning that motor guide tour pro on high and covering water until you start seeing those fish. You don't necessarily have to fish back through places that you've already found them. You can just keep going. And that is the key to this whole deal is have that active target too shining out in front of you. Turn that tour pro on high and keep rolling until you see them. We're gonna get back to it. It's starting to heat up and so is the fishing. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Powerful Total Boat Control. Balls Out, made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. Rely on, challenge your limits. Come here, you big son of a gun. Oh yeah, look at that one. 
Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Here they go. There he is. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness, this is awesome, guys. Oh, another big one. I mean, big one. I know I say big one, it's probably the exact same size as the rest of them, but it's still big to me. <clears throat> I looked down and saw four or five of them. Yeah, that's a pretty dang good one. That's the biggest one of the day so far. Oh, he's gonna jump. Ah! Take it easy, fella. Guy, he's got some shoulders on him. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Oh, come here. Come here, you big son of a gun. Oh, yeah, look at that one. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Golly. Look at the size of that fish. God. Maybe we shouldn't shoot a show here because this is too good. I'm just telling you, this is good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just kind of speechless right now because, guys, I, I, there's no exaggeration here. We've been out here about 30 minutes. And you already seen three big ones. It's pretty incredible. Brandy Branch, August. Pretty darn good right now. Let's get this big joker back. You know, staying cool in the summertime is an extremely important aspect. You know, there's a couple things that you can do to stay cool and to make sure you protect yourself. First off, always take ice. Make sure you take enough water to supply your whole entire day. You wanna be drinking a, a, probably a bottle of water every hour to every two hours. Extremely important. But on top of that is having good sun protection. You know, this particular shirt right here is a Magellan shirt. It's a brand new one at Academy, and it is easily one of my favorite shirts that I've had. I, I tend to wear it way too much, as my wife says. And it has the hood on it on the back, and you can really protect your ears, you can protect your neck, you can protect every part of your head with that hood. But the other thing is, is having a good pair of gloves. These are Glacier Glove. They come in a bunch of different colors. I like to mix and match them all the time. I have a bunch of different ones that I like to wear. But having that right sun protection, wearing good sunscreen is vitally important this time of year. So if you get out there in the dog days of summer, 105 degrees, super hot, make sure you have good sun protection. Make sure you bring a lot of ice and water because you want to make sure you stay healthy out there on the water so you can go fishing the next time. Hey y'all, this is my favorite part of the show. This is the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia Coastal Fishing Report. This segment is brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Armisen with Ugly Fishing. You can check out all my social media, all my availability, everything is right there on my website at uglyfishing.com. If you got any questions, shoot me a text at 251-747-1554. Along the Alabama coast, top water, lots and lots of top water action. Uh, trout fishing, uh, jacks, bull reds, whatever, just about any type of predatory fish in the bay right now is ready to eat a top water bait. And man, it's a lot of fun. Beef up your hooks, make sure they're strong enough for those big jacks and bull reds and get it done. Over in Mississippi, the triple tail showed up in, in a really big numbers. A lot of these fish are undersized, so keep an eye on that. But he said also in their areas, seeing jacks, reds, sharks, in, in big, big numbers around schools of pogies, mullet, and ladyfish. Along the Georgia coast, Carpin's on fire. Garrett's with Miss Judy Charters out of Savannah. He's using live bait, live pogies on the free line and on bottom. Thanks for stopping to listen to this report. Y'all keep what you need and leave the rest. God bless. There we go. God, he knocked the fire out of it. He's coming straight up. Oh, biggin. Wow. There we go. Now he's gonna go straight down. <laughs> Saw that one coming. See, that's the importance of having a good spinning reel right there is having one with a really good drag system, especially in a situation where you're throwing lighter than average line. When you know that fish is getting ready to run, 
you can just sit in there and loosen it just like that. And that Hyper Mag Speed Spin is a really quick adjusting spinning reel to where you can really adjust on the fly when you get a fish on like that. Yeah, I stuck him good though. Right in the corner of the mouth, right where you want him. There we go. Oh, man. Another nice one. Man, oh man. This lake has got some dang fish in it now. Wow, look at that. It's like the size of my arm. That's what I'm talking about. Another nice bass, probably three and a half pounds, maybe a, a little a hair bigger. A good, a good fish. Let's get this fish back and we'll talk a little bit more. And another baby Z2 on here. You know, that's one important thing is finding a bait that is going to work. That baby Z2 is a great minnow style bait. You know, today we've kind of been going back and forth between a baby Z2 and a little bit smaller minnow, but Finding the one that matches the hatch perfectly is the key to catching these fish and finding a jig head that's right that fits it is even more of a success. So and today we're throwing a 3 16 ounce, a little ball head jig head. But you know, when it comes to storing these particular baits, these, these baby Z2s, you see it's elastic. So it, it stretches really, really well. You can't just store it with just anything. You know, the baby Z2 it will actually melt with traditional plastic. So you know, like this is a traditional plastic. If I were to put these in a box together, they would actually melt together. And I actually have an example of that right here. I mean, look at that. That's because a soft plastic bait got in the box with the other bait. So you have to be really, really careful whenever you're storing these. And finding the right tackle box is maybe one of the most important aspects of it. This is an H2OX, this is by Academy. It's a 3700 waterproof box. And I've had this box for almost a year and a half now and it has stood the test of time, it has survived. And, and any time that something that can actually survive with me is a really, really good product. But it has three different latches on all three sides, so it seals the box completely. It keeps your baits protected. But guys, the fishing is getting hot. I'm gonna get back out there and hopefully we'll catch it really, I'm, I'm looking for one of them real big ones. That's what I'm going for. So we'll see what we can do. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference. Strike King, Taiwan on, and by Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Oh, I got him. Oh, he came from a long ways over there. That's a big one. That might be the biggest of the day. I got him. Oh, he came from a long ways over there. That's a big one. That might be the biggest of the day. Let's go ahead and back that drag off a little bit. That's a really big one. No, he ain't that big. He's a good one, though. Golly. Another nice one. God, I couldn't even hardly turn that one. That's why I thought it was a big one at first. I mean, it's a good one for sure. I was thinking like six or seven pounder. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Another nice bass hooked perfectly in the top of the mouth. Another nice one here at Brandy Branch. Golly, guys, this, this place is absolutely loaded with really beautiful fish. I just, you know, unlike a lot of other places, the coloration of the fish here are just really, really pretty. You know, they're, they're good, decent, thick sized bass, and that's exactly what you want to catch when you're out here on the lake. I mean, don't get me wrong, every once in a while you're gonna catch those really skinny ones, but that's far from the norm on this particular body of water, but gosh, another great bass for sure. You know, this particular lake has two big arms. One arm that runs up the right side and one runs up the left. Up the left arm is a big power plant. You can actually see it in the background of the shot right now. But the thing is, is that power plant is not in function anymore. And actually what I heard is this lake is on the brink of closing down. So if you're gonna come fish this lake, you need to soon because what they're gonna do is they're gonna shut the gate on it and nobody will be allowed to fish it again. So. It's not a lake that's gonna last forever. It's not a lake that we're gonna be able to come to all the time. And that's part of the reason I came to film today is because it is a special lake. It is, has been one for a long time for me. 
Oh, you gotta be kidding me, fish. There he goes. There we go. Oh, I had my drag a little bit loose there. Oh, come here, fish. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I wouldn't always recommend that, but it just kind of warranted it. There we go. God, look how, the difference in fish is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. Look how skinny that fish is. In comparison to those other ones that we caught, I mean, just really, really thin. Now this is what you would normally expect this time of year. The, the How this build of fish is in comparison to some of the others. Those others are anomalies. They're out here feeding, they're chasing bait, schooling, and things like that. This is one that's been sitting around that grass and not feeding. It's more of a pelagic fish that's just kind of been chilling out. Uh, and this is what you would typically find in August, September timeframe, that real skinny build. And as the year progresses, they're gonna keep building up bigger and bigger to get ready for the spawn. But golly, still an awesome bite. Still fought harder than the four and five pounders that I caught earlier. Still a good fish. But you know, one thing that this lake has that you just don't see in a lot of other bodies of water is really deep hydrilla. I mean, I remember the days back on Toledo Bend uh, when you had hydrilla that was in that 20 foot range. And, and there's a couple of lakes through Texas that have that, but not very many as it used to be. I mean, there's, there's grass out here in 20 to 25 foot, even 30 foot in some places. And that is unreal when you start thinking about it. Today's been a phenomenal day. We're getting out here early because you know what? We caught them really, really good. So we're gonna catch y'all next week, but I'm gonna talk to you about our baits here in just a minute. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll see y'all here in just a second. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Tourism, Let's Fish on Alabama's Beaches, Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today on Brandy Branch, I was using one particular bait to catch all my bass. You know, and a lot of times, your best days are the ones where you lock a bait in your hand and you catch those fish. And that is a minnow style bait. You know, just similar to this baby Z2. This is a striking baby Z2. This is about the exact same size as the minnow I was using. A 3 16 ounce ball head was key. Use an active target too though. I can't stress it enough. The unique thing about active target too is it gives you clear image separation. And what that does is when you're in that grass, that real deep hydrilla, you can actually see the bass swimming in and through the grass. And we were targeting a lot of those bass in that particular situation. So having that active target, scanning around, finding those particular fish was really, really crucial to catching those fish. And we talked about it earlier, but the rod and reel is a seven foot Mark Rose Signature Series rod. This is a just a extra fast rod. This is the one that I like to use when I'm using a smaller minnow style bait. Now, if I was to upsize to maybe the big Z2, then I'm gonna go to the 7.4 Mark Rose rod, but it's still a good rod for just about every single application. But the star winner of the day was the Hyper Mag Speed Spin. I know y'all have seen it more times than not when we get in those situations where we got big bass on and they're pulling that drag, you've got to have a good reel that's going to be able to withstand the, the test of what those bass are going to put you through. But guys, dog days of summer, I don't care what time of year it is. Fishing is good here at Brandy Branch. You need to come check it out. I know it's been a lot of fun, but we're getting ready to head to the house and I'll see you on the next episode. <music>